Hello everybody and welcome to the, uh, I guess this is the third or fourth installment. We, we had a couple videos last night, so this is uh, the rounds five and six of the 2012 BSN Mock Draft. I'm Kerry Gibbs and this is our CEO Dan Evans. And, uh, you know, we, we've been doing this for the past two nights. We're going to try to finish up all these tonight. And uh, we we got some really good, really good players in these last last uh, last few rounds, don't we, Dan? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, quality's still there. You've still got a lot of players that you go down this list that are, are very much uh, possibilities and, and high pro, uh, pro prospects. They have to work on one or two things in their game. But um, there are definitely some players with some, some real good talent down in these, uh, these later rounds. Yep. And speaking of talent, we'll go ahead and kick off the uh, fifth round. At uh, pick 129, we got a really good receiver here, Zach Watkins, uh, the receiver out of Butler. He, he, you know, he set a bunch of records there. He, he's a really good receiver. Yeah, I was really impressed with him, Kerry. He uh, performed well, complete showcase. Uh, guy at the FCS level put up some big numbers. Uh, you know, top 10, top 15, top 20 in the country um, at the receiving. Uh, can make catches in traffic. Can make big plays. Um, uh, I'd like to see his 40 get a little lower, but overall I thought his production was really good. Um, you know, I think he's a very solid player. Yep. And here at the pick 130, we got another showcase uh, participant. We got Corey Scruggs, defensive end out of Everett. Yeah, Corey's a big kid. Uh, runs about 242, 243. Um, you know, I'd like to see him get up to about 250 to play that, that end position. Um, you know, split a little bit, draft. Um, uh, you know, I don't know what his uh, 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 he had played well during the regular season. Not sure if he wants to continue the pro career. I know he was sort of going back and forth with it. I think mm -hmm. if he dives in, he could be a very uh, very talented prospect. Um, mm -hmm. But that's that's really up again. That's why I slid a little down in our boards. Um, uh, you know, uh, had to shake a little bit of the rust off at the collegiate showcase. Mm -hmm. But definitely a kid with the body size that can be a can be a, a, a good player for defense that position. Mm -hmm. You can't argue with that six four two forty two frame either. But uh, at number uh, at pick one thirty one, we got uh, Alex Sewell, S Sewell uh, safety out of Indiana State. Yeah, Alex is a he's a good talent out of Indiana State. A good uh, you know, and our scouts have really liked him. A lot of pro teams are very high up on him. Uh, solid safety. Yep. And uh, here at pick number one thirty two, we got uh, Wes Chambly. He's a receiver. He also returns punts from Wabash. Yeah, he's an explosive kick returner. Uh, can really, really break one. Had a really good pro day. Ran the, you know, high four fours, low four fives. Uh, was a speedster. Played at Wabash, a, a very quality Division three school. Uh, he's probably gonna have to fit his way into the kick returning, but he, he did show his ability to catch the ball. Um, you know, uh, but I think definitely kick returning is definitely his way in. Mm -hmm, definitely. And at pick one thirty three, we got uh, Daryl Whiting. He's a running back out of Fordham. Yeah, Fordham really had a down year. I think that's really what hurt Daryl's production this senior year. He's a big kid, though, 200-plus pounds, uh, can really run. I like his frame. Uh, you know, once again, needs to get the 40 down a little bit. You know, the lack of production at Fordham really sort of hurt his stock. Uh, but he, he is a kid that, that can be explosive and can run people over. And uh, might be one of those sort of uh, guys you'll see perform real well if he gets a shot in the pro leagues, um, you know, almost like a fresh start. I really like him though as a, as a talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very big running back. Uh, we got uh, pick number 134. We got Arthur Hobbs. He's a cornerback out of Nebraska Kearney. Yeah, he's, a, he's been an All American on a number of people's boards. A good, uh, a good solid. Uh, put up good numbers in Nebraska Kearney. Uh, you know, ran in the uh, you know uh, you know in the high four fours, low mm -hmm. four fives. Uh, a good speed um, and, and, and a good cornerback. Yep. And at pick 135, we got Lee Meisner. He's a linebacker out of Col Colorado State Pueblo. Yeah, you, you know, a lot of people are really high on Lee. Um, uh, put up some good numbers at, at his pro day as well. Mm -hmm. um, love having where he is. Um, and, and the size might be a little bit of an issue there. You need to get 240, 245, mm -hmm. proper size for a linebacker. You know, um, that, that's the case with a lot of guys at the, at the smaller school level fitting into that linebacker mold. Yep, and here at pick 136, we got uh, Chance Coda. He's a defensive end out of uh, Southern Illinois. Yeah, I really like Chance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he really has sort of a patented move. It's almost a, uh, you know, a, a, you know, he jumps out of the way of the block and jumps back into the hole. Um, you know, that, that seems to be a signature move that I see. Uh, might need to develop some other moves besides that. Sort of why he's sort of mm -hmm. where he is on our, our draft board. You know, like to see more of 
for some explosiveness. But he does have a lot of quickness, a lot of good athletic ability. And once again, uh, he's got the proper body size and, and somebody that's definitely mm-hmm. worth taking that. Yep. Here at pick uh, 137, we got Alex Jones, tight end out of Indiana State. Yeah, same thing. A lot of production out of Alex at Indiana State. Solid tight end. Um, I know he's really high up on, on our boards with the uh, staff and the offensive scouting staff in the scouting area. Um, they really like them. Yep. Uh, pick 138, we got Chad Cipher, offensive tackle out of Jacksonville. I really like Chad. Mm-hmm. I, I liked him last year as a preseason All-American. American mm-hmm. can buy us. He's got good quickness. We matched up against Mario Kern uh, mm-hmm. in 2010, I believe it was. Did a very solid job against one of the top pass rushers in the country. Um, you know, Chad has a shoulder issue right now. That's the only reason why he slid a little further. Injury concerns there. But he's a good size. You know, the 6'4", 300-pound uh, frame. He's got really good feet. You know, once again, let that mm-hmm. guy heal. He could be a very big uh, pickup for your team. Yep. And here at pick 139, uh, Josh Rennell, we got a, he's a running back at, out of uh, Wayne State. Yeah, I really like Josh. Mm-hmm. Watching his film... Um, you know, he you know, really led Wayne State, uh, State's uh, surgeons all the way to the national mm-hmm. championship game. Um, can, you know, really do a lot of things, catch the football, mm-hmm. uh, run football, break tackle, break, um, you know, break long runs. 40 time was, was, needs to be a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Also, his size is about 185, 190. like to see him get up in the 200 range. I know he's coming back from a foot injury, um, you know, but, you know, Given a couple of money, he gets up into the 200 range, drops the 40 mm-hmm. a little bit. He's, he's a good kid. He's a solid player. He's a leader. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like him, but that's sort of why he fell in our uh, in our mock draft. Yeah, he had a very good year last year at Wayne State. Uh, I pick a 140. We got Ron Davis. He's a wide receiver out of Stillman. Yeah, Ron is actually a draft class of 2011 product, mm-hmm. um, but attended our collegiate showcase. Ron's a big kid. I've actually timed him personally in the four fours on the way. Four, four, five. We have four, five, one, four, five, two at our showcase. Mm-hmm. He's a big guy. He uh, can get open, can separate. Um, I really like him. Very raw from Stillman. Uh, uh, but, I, you know, a, a kid that a lot of the people, a lot of the scouts, uh, the showcase, we like, and we include him in our mock draft. He's a showcase attendee and uh, still eligible to be picked up anytime. Uh, I think he would make a good addition. Uh, he's a big guy. He's got a good frame. Uh, he can really catch the ball away from his body. I really like I really like Bob. Yep. And uh, 141, I'm, re- I'm really going to butcher this last name, Dan. Ray Wedgersenek, he's a uh, defensive tackle of Keene. Yeah, Ray's uh, he's been predominantly been focusing um, on long snapping. He's a very mm-hmm. good long snapper. Um, you know, he was a very good uh, standout player for Keene. Um, uh, you know, it was a tough block. Mm-hmm. Uh, has a tendency sometimes to, to not blow himself up field. Um, likes to sort of, uh, you know, hold guy his man and, and shoot off block. Um, I like to see a guy that goes all the way through and penetrates, mm-hmm. but his long snapping abilities might land him uh, on an NFL team uh, this coming uh, this coming spring. Yeah. And at 142, we got Brecken Kennedy. He's a safety out of Manchester. Yeah, I really like Brecken. I've liked mm-hmm. him for the last couple of years. Um, a, a very athletic safety. Plays faster mm-hmm. than his numbers dictate. Put up really good tackling numbers at Manchester. Can really fill, uh, fill a, a a uh, whole good free safety guy, um, very much plays like Herschel Thornton can really mm-hmm. run the alley. Mm-hmm. Uh, not like I said, not as well as him, but still a lot of really good football. In this. Yep. Near one forty three, we got another quarterback. We got Dan Pitcher, quarterback from Cortland. Yeah, Dan put up some big numbers at Cortland State. Um, they had a really good year this mm-hmm. past year. Um, you know, he you know can throw a lot of the throws. Only thing that hurts him size a little bit. She's about six foot. Um, you know. Uh, I mean, it's work a little bit at deep ball, but an overall very sharp quarterback. I think a guy that could you know sort of make his way into the arena leagues. He's got a good, a good quick release, and uh, I think that uh, uh, you know, that would probably be the pathway for him. Yeah. Here at one forty four, another showcase athlete. We got Jason Henshaw, def- defensive tackle out of Kutztown. Yeah, Jason. Um, you know, uh, is a good athlete. Um, you know, showed real well at the collegiate showcase. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, a little, a little, very much like. Ray, let's see him get more backfield penetration. Mm-hmm. The height is a little bit of an issue. You know, five eleven, six foot, um, probably leans a little more. You know, the, the, that that's a little bit of an issue. Why you sort of mm-hmm. floated down here? But he's a good athlete. He's got a good sense of the game. He's got a good motor, good attitude. 
once again reminds me a lot of this to the guy that came from Cuts Down, Chris Mendina, who's playing in the AFL, up uh, in the end of the IFL. Very similar style of play, uh, player, and uh, you know I think that uh, that Jason definitely has a future uh, in pro football. Yeah, no question about that. At uh, pick one forty five, we get Clarence Ward, tied in from Grandview. Yeah, Clarence. A lot of the a lot of the coaches at the Cleveland Showcase really <laughs> liked him. Really, run, you know, got a good feel for space. He can really catch the ball. He's a good player. Um, really knows the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, really fits well. Very smooth in his route running. Uh, can really find his way in his zone. Only reason why he slid a little further down the height six two. You, know, you like to see your tight end be a little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. Probably play position, but once again, I, I really saw a player. Somebody a little bit a great example. Somebody that slid down a little bit on our boards. But still, a very quality player. I think that people need to take a look at. Yep. And up next is a player you mentioned in one of our earlier videos. We got number one forty six. We have CJ Gum, linebacker from Wabash. Yeah, I really like CJ. Mm-hmm. CJ is probably one of the, the more instinctual linebackers that you have in this in this draft class. He can really fill a hole. Uh, very intense. Uh, big hit hitter. Uh, to fill holes. Mm-hmm. Didn't test very well. I think you know very much like some of the other guys. Really, if he were dic- if he would dedicate. Or more of a personal trainer and a more of a speed coach. Mm-hmm. Get his forty down. Get his lateral speed down a little bit from the testing standpoint. Mm-hmm. But instinctually, as a linebacker, played at Wabash, was anchored their defense. They're a very friendly, tough uh, defensive team. Mm-hmm. I really like CJ on film. You know, if you watch him on film, he, he plays a lot faster than he does. Yeah. And pick one forty seven. We got Michael Blodgett. He's a wide receiver out of Monmouth. Yeah, he was Alex Caney's go-to guy at mm-hmm. Monmouth. Uh, can really do a lot of things. Can break, uh, break runs. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, catch the ball, break some deep. He's a good route runner. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he's one of the another you know, the five ten, five eleven, six foot uh, size type player. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, definitely used to playing with a with a, uh, a pro style uh, quarterback. So um, once again, a guy that that I really like. Mm-hmm. And at pick one forty eight, we got Rod Austin. He's a center out of Elon. Yeah, Rod would be higher ranked up on the board. Injuries are a real concern here. Mm-hmm. He's one of the better centers, obviously, in in the uh, in our mock draft. But mm-hmm. injuries are the reason why he slid down the board. Yeah, uh, one forty nine. We got Nico Carson. He's a defensive end out of Valpo. Yeah, I mean Nico really showed well at the Cleveland mm-hmm. Showcase. Quick first step, big kid. Uh, really can get after the quarterback. Was very impressed with him at the showcase. Um, definitely moved a lot of those boards. Uh, uh, based on his depth performance. Yep. And at pick number 150, we got James Barker. He's an offensive tackle out of Austin Pay. Yeah, uh, yeah. James is a you know kid with a great attitude, mm-hmm. uh, tough kid, tough physically, tough mentally. Uh, I know I've been with some of his coaches. They really, you know, they really like him. He's a very mm-hmm. you know aggressive kid. Can mm-hmm. really play that tackle position well. Willing to play all the line mm-hmm. positions, which I think when you're when you're looking for a line from the small school, you're looking for a guy that can fill multiple roles, and that's, mm. that's, uh, that, that's James. And at pick 151, we got Jerome Jerome Raymond. He's a defensive end, also is listed as a linebacker from Moorhead State. Yeah, had a lot of production. Jerome, um, you know, tested very well um, mm. uh, at his pro day. Mm. Um, definitely has this high play position. Um, like I said, probably don't play the linebacker position. The only thing there is the ability to cover out of traffic. Pick 152, we got Barrington Morrison, defensive end from Clarion. Yeah, he's a big kid, uh, preseason All-American selection by us. Mm -hmm. Can really get after the back. Uh, uh, You know, very solid kid, once again, that body side defensive end position. Pick 153, we got Jordan McGowan. He's a cornerback from Humboldt State. Yeah, Jordan runs 40, about 4-5. Great kid, great story, Mm -hmm. hard-working kid. Um, you know, he needs to needs a little bit more on tight man to man coverage, I think. Mm-hmm. But a uh, kid that, that's very instinctual, that knows the game, mm-hmm. has a good work ethic, and and, so, and, a, and it would be a good addition to somebody's roster. Yeah. Here's another quarterback at pick 154. We got Chris Ware, quarterback from Eastern Oregon. Yeah, he really lit it up uh, this year in the NAIA. Mm-hmm. He, uh, uh, beat Carroll College uh, this past year. Mm-hmm. He's currently playing overseas. He's got a nice size arm. Can really hit a lot of different routes. Um, I like Chris. Uh, he obviously already playing professional football. Yeah. Pick one one fifty five. We got C J Estelle, cornerback, also returns punts from uh, Tennessee Martin. Yeah, he he is an All American at the mm-hmm. kick returning position, predominantly where he is. Most 
smaller side, you know, reason why it's a little, little further down, but kick returners are, you know, the size is not a huge issue, um, ability to make big plays. Yep. Pick 156, we got Travis Daniels running back from UN, UNC Pembroke. Yeah, big, big production from mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, ran for, you know, 1,300 yards, I believe, at UNC Pembroke. They're an independent uh, school within Division Two, and uh, really put up some big numbers. Didn't have as many pro day numbers on him, sort of the reason why he slid down the board. Yep. Speaking of big numbers, here at pick 157, we got uh, John Meadows, wide receiver. He also returns kicks from West Virginia Wesleyan. Yeah, John John led Division Two in receiving. Um, you know, he, he comes from that say that that West Virginia Wesleyan offense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Throws the ball a lot. I think he's a solid receiver. I didn't really see the breakaway ability, which I, which really, if you look at our guys that are in the top first two rounds, maybe three rounds, you see a lot of breakaway ability to really, you know, uh, catch one and take one to the house. He is a solid possession receiver. Questions will actually get over um, uh, to uh, to the pro game. Um, you know, that that's my only question mark there. Yep, definitely a very unique style of offense at West Virginia Wesleyan. Uh, pick number one fifty eight. We got Dylan Bedford. Tied in from Eastern Oregon. Yeah, he can sort of do it all. I mean, he can, uh, he can block and catch out of the back. He can catch. He can play the H back position. You know, I really like Dylan. Um, you know, obviously one of Chris Ware's targets uh, out there in Eastern Oregon. And mm-hmm. uh, no, I really think. Uh, pick one fifty nine. We got Troy Spiker, linebacker from Capital. Yeah, the only reason why Troy's a little lower on the board, you know, the size is the issue there, but very instinctual, can really jump routes. He ran, uh, uh, I believe, a four five forty at his mm-hmm. at his uh, at his pro day. Very fast, very mm-hmm. athletic, um, very instinctual. Can really fill the gaps. Uh, tests really well. He's worth taking a look at with how well he tested. Uh, um, you know, he can maybe play the strong safety position or get mm-hmm. up to two thirty five, two forty, and play linebacker. Mm-hmm. But if he's at the weight, maybe he drops a little bit and moves to strong safety. And he definitely has the speed for it. There's no question about that. Yeah. And with the last pick around number five, we'll go to pick one sixty. We got Bryce Robertson, cornerback from Bucknell. Yeah, one of the top interception guys um, in the country, the FCS level. Uh, ran four six at his pro day, which you know really has really moved him down on the boards. You can see a guy the very worst four five four five um, level um, mm-hmm. as far as the forty goes, uh, but made a lot of plays, a lot of interceptions. Can jump the ball pretty well. Uh, mm-hmm. Really played well in a zone-based scheme where he made a lot of interceptions opposed to a one-on-one press kind of interception guy, but still a very quality player. Yep, and that concludes round five of the 2012 BSN mock draft. And now let's uh, go ahead and uh, jump right into round six. We'll go with the first pick in round six, pick number 161. We go uh, Nick McGanahan. He's a safety, also listed as a linebacker from Seton Hill. Yeah, um, you know, he played predominantly the linebacker position. Mm-hmm. At uh, Seton Hill, I like him very much to Troy Spiker, who has picked a couple points higher than him. Very athletic and really fill. Once again, he's in that tweener position um, of the 220. Didn't have as many pro day numbers on him as I'd like to have had. Um, but still, very good talent, good tackler, you know, very athletic. And really, really even get out to as well. Yep. Uh, pick 162, we got Jesse Mitchell. He's a big offensive tackle from Kentucky State. Yeah, I want to make a distinction here between him, a guy like Jesse Mitchell and a guy like Solomon Orr. They're both in that 360 range. Solomon Orr was very athletic, uh, can really move around, make some blocks. You know, that's why he was up at pick 63. Jesse, a little, you know, very strong kid, a big kid, not as athletic um, as, 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 let's say, a Solomon Orr. But once again, I think it's a little bit more... Maybe on the on the on the personal training side of it, maybe he loses a little bit of weight. Works on the agility. He was very effective, though. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, pancaking guys. Mm-hmm. You know, very effective there. Yep. Pick one sixty three. We got Anthony Coleman. He's a wide receiver from Robert Morris. Yeah, I really like Anthony. He was probably one of the guys that we showcased that really stood out to me. You know, didn't have huge production at Robert Morris, but he has the body size, two pound plus. Can really run, you know, four six range in his forty. You know, can make tough catches, big plays. He's a good route runner. I really like him. He's probably one of the best, better route runners mm-hmm. in this whole long track. He's a little lower because of the production, and you know, not as tall, mm-hmm. like five ten, you know, five eleven. But I think he's got tremendous upside. He was one of the guys I was really impressed with at the showcase. And at pick one sixty four, we got Jerome Bunch. 
He's a running back from Mount Ida. Yeah, he's sort of a big kid, about 6'2", almost 200. Um, you know, really tore apart the competition in the NEFC, um, you know, and uh, can sort of do it all, can break runs, very high in the production mm. standpoint. I have as many pro day numbers on him, that's why he slid down. And at pick 165, we got Christian Golder. He's a safety from Lindenwood. Yeah, you know, Christian, a uh, very athletic kid, tests very well, um, you know, needs to work a little bit more on his going to CFL camp, um, but a uh, very talented uh, player. And at pick 166, we got Kobe Wittick. He's a tight end from uh, CSU Pueblo. Yeah, very uh, very productive year for Kobe in a position I know our scouts really like him. Uh, pick 167, we got Jamal Williams. He's a safety, also listed as a cornerback from Keene University. Yeah, Jamal tested very well. High 4-4s mm-hmm. in, in, in his testing. Um, Ryan down was a safety at Keene. who's going to move the corner. He can jump the ball. He can make plays. He's a good tackler. Only reason why he slid down the board, little, two reasons why. A little short, number one, and mm-hmm. number two, you know, just a transition to cornerback position. Didn't have a lot of film in that. But, you know, well, I think he's worth a shot. Yeah. And at pick 168, we got Brandon Williams. He's a defensive end out of Saginaw Valley. Yeah, big kid. Really fits the fringe and really mm-hmm. get after uh, the pass for pressure. Shoot, I, I really like Brandon. 169, we got Darren Williams. He's a safety out of Abilene Christian. Yeah, uh, you know, Darian, uh, very athletic kid. Can really fill the, you know, fill the alleys. Um, you know, uh, you know, definitely has to work a little bit more on the coverage, mm-hmm. but he's a very good hitter. He's a very instinctual player out there. Yep. Pick 170, we got Steve Santia. He's a defensive tackle out of uh, Cal PA. Yeah, another solid player next to Tom, Thomas Little, a real anchor. Uh, that, uh, that, that defensive line for Cal, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, had solid production this year. Um, and, you know, I think we mm-hmm. a BSN athlete of the week at one point mm-hmm. uh, during our regular season. Uh, pick 171, we got Justin Cooper. He uh, is a running back, also returns kicks for Washburn. Yeah, he's a really solid runner. Um, can really, uh, you know, uh, make some big plays. Ran high, 4-5, mm-hmm. five, five, low 4-6s in his 4 um, You know, only reason why he slid a little bit down. Uh, was productive, but not as productive as some of the other backs. But once again, another solid player. Yep. At uh, pick 172, we got Tyler Kuehl. He's a guard from St. Norbert College. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the showcase. Um, mm-hmm. You know, can really get after it. A good pad level, has good footwork, really was able to step up and play. You know, when you look at a D3 line and stepping up, playing against some guys in the FCS, mm-hmm. and it was a very talented defensive line. At the collegiate showcase, he held his own. Mm-hmm. He really impressed our offensive line coach, Mike Bailey. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and I think he's a kid that definitely uh, uh, should be on a pro roster. Mm-hmm. No doubt about that. Pick 173, we got Brett Moss. Uh, listed as an outside linebacker and a defensive end out of Kutztown. Yeah, he was our he was our D two national player of the year. Mm-hmm. Slid a little bit down, slid down on our boards. Came in lighter than the two forty that he was projected at two twenty eight, mm-hmm. which really has a lot of concern. Number one, I don't, I don't think he can play defensive end at that weight. Playing the linebacker position, he didn't really run very well in his mm-hmm. agility drills. Didn't show that ability to really blow by guys uh, rushing off the end. That's, that's sort of my concern. He did was very productive in his college career. Can't, can't really get out the back. Has got some nice moves from the defensive end mm-hmm. position. The weight is a big issue and the size there mm-hmm. um, is a big issue for him. Pick 174, we get Kevin Davis. He's a wide receiver from Lake Forest. Yeah, Kevin put up big numbers. Uh, Lake Four uh, ran four six mm-hmm. at our at the BSN Collegiate Showcase. Um, you know, made a lot of big plays. Kevin's definitely a kid that can break it. The only reason why he slid a little down on our, on our boards, number one, you know, um, being about five ten, five eleven, you know, not big size. I remember I didn't really see a lot of quality route running in his in, in his Lake Forest film. Saw a lot of big plays. A guy like him, you're looking for a guy that can transition into more mm-hmm. of a possession receiver type game. I'm not really 100 percent sure about the route running. They can take, but you know that's why he's sort of where he is. Would have been higher with maybe a little better forty and, and more, you know, showing more with the route runner. Mm-hmm. And at pick one seventy five, we got Al Quay. He's a linebacker from Concordia St. Paul. Yeah, I like it. a little bit, a uh, little bit on the uh, smaller side. Mm-hmm. Could play that strong safe position. That's probably why he slid down. Tested real well at his pro day. Very athletic. Uh, very much, you know, him and Taylor Selby sort of helped 
anchor that um, mm-hmm. that Concordia single uh, linebacking core. Like I said, the question to Mark is, can he play the strong safety position? He mm-hmm. definitely tackle, get after the quarterback, but you know, can he either put on the weight and play the outside back, or can he step can he step back and um, and play the strong safety position? Yeah. And at pick 176, we got a really good sized defensive end here. We got Josh Eaton, defensive end from Bucknell. Yeah, Josh is a, he's a big kid, uh, very aggressive. Uh, didn't have as many pro day numbers on him, and just slid where he was. And at pick 177, we got Austin James. He's a defensive tackle out of Grandview. Yeah, he's very productive. Austin was very productive at, at, at his position. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, very, very quick, make some plays in the backfield. Pick 178, we got Desmond Cox. He's a running back from Moorhead State. Yeah, the only reason why Desmond slid a little further down, a little smaller, played that fullback position more in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, a, a triple option based on uh-huh. offense, put up some big numbers. He's about the size is a concern as well with him. Um, that's why I sort of slid down to where he is. Yep. Pick 179, we got Josh Carter. He's a quarterback from Springfield. Yeah, Josh is one of the most athletic quarterbacks we have. I mean, uh, you know, really uh, probably going to have to play the wide receiver position. His release is a little bit low on the quarterback side. He's not a tall kid to begin with, and the release is very low from him. But a very athletic and tough runner can really break uh, runs long. Once again, sliding down because if you look at the quarterback position, the, the sides, look at the wide receiver position, didn't see a lot yet there to really uh, uh, dictate uh, whether he will uh, – uh, play wide receiver at this level. Pick 180, we got Kendall Noble, offensive tackle of Norfolk State. Yeah, Kendall's a little smaller, uh, offensive lineman for Norfolk State, very productive, was a preseason All-American. Mm-hmm. Um, our, our standpoint, let that Norfolk State team you know, is one of the top in the MEAC. I really like Kendall, he really gets after it. Um, you know, like I said, size is the only reason why I moved down, down the list. Pick 181, we got Jonathan Simmons, defensive end out of Wingate. This is a kid I really like, sort of, you know, uh, really mm-hmm. hidden. Uh, has the size to play tackle, but more or less a defense end. Very quick, can really get after the quarterback. One of the hidden guys that really didn't hear a lot about. Mm-hmm. He submitted his, uh, his film to me, um, uh, you know, and I really like him. Yep. Here's a guy that impressed me at the showcase at pick 182. We got uh, Kim McDonald, wide receiver from Northwestern Oklahoma State. Yeah, Kim's a big kid, like 6'4", mm-hmm. over 200 pounds. Mm-hmm. You know, was one of, you know, had a very productive year in the NAIA. Really held his own at the showcase. A good route runner can really use his body to sort of get position. I uh, really like him. A lot of upside to that kid. Yep. Pick 183, another NAIA guy. We got uh, Cody Kilthow, cornerback from Valley City State. Yeah, Cody had a very productive uh, senior. He's a, he's a BSN All American from mm-hmm. us. Didn't run as good in the 40. Um, at, at our collegiate showcase is why he sort of uh, slid down. Also, you know, needs to work a little bit more on the tighter man-to-man coverage if he wants to sort of if he wants to move up the higher levels of professional football. Still, I think could make a very good addition to a pro roster. Mm-hmm. Pick one eighty-four. We got Jeremiah Saffold. He's a wide receiver from Doan. Yeah, he really impresses the collegiate showcase. Very quick, good route runner. Can really get separation. Was very productive at the NAIA level. Yep. Uh, pick 185, we got Dwight Houston, linebacker from Camp Ellsville. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Dwight, you know, he comes in a little bit shorter. It's the only thing that really hurts him, but very athletic, can make mm-hmm. plays, can, can cover, great attitude. I know he's a BSN All-American selection from us. He's just very productive, you know, not very flashy, just mm-hmm. gets the job done. Yep. Uh, next, we got Janoris Darby. He's a safety, also listed as, an, also listed as a cornerback out of West Georgia. Yeah, he's a kid that can really run the alleyway, can really, um, uh, really be good in run support, very athletic, just, just fits real well around the football field. He sort of got that has really good football sense. Pick 188, 188, we got George's Geddon. He's a defensive end out of Shaw. Yeah, he's got a good first step. Um, not huge production his senior year at Shaw, mm-hmm. but he's got a good body size, good first step, tests pretty well, um, you know. Oh, uh, definitely making good additional pro roster. Yep. And uh, pick uh, 189, we got Matt Money, offensive tackle out of Hanover College. Yeah, he's a very big kid. I'm very, mm-hmm. liking him very much like Billy Castro. Not as good as Billy Castro, uh, in my opinion. Once again, pad level is the issue there. Does currently play in the IFL mm-hmm. or in, in an indoor football league, professional league. Um, 
helped lead Hanover um, mm-hmm. while he was while he was anchoring the line there. Um, but pad level is a little bit of an issue there. He's the, the footwork, but another solid offensive line. Pick 190, we got Anthony Baskerville. He's a wide receiver out of Rhode Island. Did I pick again, Kerry? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, pick one. Pick 190, Anthony Baskerville, wide receiver out of uh, Rhode Island. Yeah, Anthony's a kid that um, uh, had a very good season in Rhode Island, her team, uh, all CAA selection. Mm-hmm. He can make big plays, make big plays out of the Wildcat. Mm-hmm. He didn't test as well, sort of reason why he slid down uh, all boards um, in the mock draft, but still very, very quality. Yep. Uh, pick 191, we got Kevin Bredeau, outside linebacker, also also listed as a defensive end out of Midwestern State. Yeah, very productive kid, uh, mm-hmm. a, a big kid. Uh, um, trust that the collegiate showcase can really get after the full quarterback at some good uh, good power moves. And with the last pick in the sixth round, we'll go uh, pick 192, Matt Leon, defensive end out of Salisbury. Yeah, this is another kid, uh, you know, um, uh, his, uh, he tested very well, ran the four sevens, mm-hmm. I believe. I mean, just a, a big athletic kid. Um, on, on It's sort of tough at Salisbury. He played nose, he played tackle, he played end, he played a lot of different positions. Um, you know, pad level was a big issue in watching him. You know, if you get pad level down, he could be a very uh, explosive player. Yep. And with that, that wraps up rounds five and six. Uh, we'll get we'll uh, do seven, eight, and nine here later on. They'll, they'll all be out here. Uh, should be out tomorrow, which will be uh, what, April eighteenth. So look out for all the videos. They're coming up soon, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you, we'll see you then.